Today I'm going to take a look at a very different kind of operating system. Today I'm going to take a look at the recently released React OS 0.4.13. React OS has been under development for about 16, 17 years. Uh, I think it started around 2004 and it's still in alpha quality stage. So they call it an alpha. It is not something that you're going to probably install on hardware and live in. But React OS basically is a free and open source Windows alternative. And when I say Windows alternative, I'm talking about old school Windows. Again, this project started in 2004. And when they started in 2004, they were trying to be a clone of Windows 2000 back then. So, you know, we're 20 years almost into its development. It's still alpha quality software. And even once they get a stable release, how many people really want a clone of Windows 2000? Probably not that many. So they just had a new release. Again, 0.4.13 was just released uh, like a day or two ago. It's all linked to the release notes if you guys are interested in reading any of that. For those of you that want to download this and check it out, they offer two different ISOs. This is very important. If you want to check it out in a virtual machine like I'm doing today, download the main ISO, which is the boot CD. They also offer an alternative ISO called a live CD. That's great if you just want to stick it on a USB stick and try it out in a live environment like on your physical machine. But if you're going to do a virtual machine install, grab the boot CD. Also, if you're going to do a virtual machine install, uh, I recommend you install it inside VirtualBox. I couldn't really get it to function properly inside Virt Manager. I tried. Now, I did have some struggles getting this thing to work inside VirtualBox as well. You do have to enable a few things in the VirtualBox settings. Otherwise, you may not be able to use React OS inside VirtualBox. I had to dig through their documentation a little bit, but I was finally able to get it worked out. So... If you're going to try this out in a VM, use VirtualBox, and in VirtualBox, what you want to do is go to your settings, and I will go ahead and set up a new VM right here. Processor. Now, React OS can only use one CPU. Now, I have 24 CPUs available. Typically, I give my VMs more than one CPU, but React OS can't use it. There's no point in trying to, to do more than one CPU. Uh, everything else here looks good. Yeah, that's the only thing we need to change from the defaults. Now, video memory. React OS, I don't think, can use more than 32 megs video memory. So do not go more than 32 megs for video memory. I know for most operating systems, I know myself, I typically just always go to the max. 128 megs is the max in the GUI virtual box. Don't do that because React OS can't handle it and it may cause you some issues. You do need to enable both 3D acceleration and 2D acceleration. Under storage, of course, we need to attach an ISO. So I've got the React OS ISO somewhere in here. Let me attach it. All right, and then under audio, I'm not actually going to use audio. I'm just going to set a null audio driver because I don't want the, the audio in the VM conflicting with the audio on my host machine because, of course, I'm recording this video here. All right, this is very important. Network. Now, under network, by default, it's set to NAT. That's fine. Leave that. But go down here to advanced. Click on advanced and go to adapter type. And by default, it's set to Intel Pro. Get rid of that. What you need to set this to is PCNet Fast 3. PCNet Fast 3. And the only other thing I'm going to do for purposes of this video is I'm going to get rid of some of the SysTray stuff and the menu systems that typically appear in VirtualBox virtual machines, just so I have a cleaner window to record. All right. Now, this is extremely small font here. This resolution is crazy small. In VirtualBox, if you hit Control-C, the right Control-C, it will blow up the screen here. It'll zoom it in. All right, so I'm going to choose English US. By the way, this install process, seriously, React OS installs in like 30 seconds. Not kidding. <laughs> so I'm going to hit enter to install or upgrade React OS. Yes. Hit enter again to continue. Yes. Uh, do I want to accept these device settings? I'm fine with the defaults. It figured out I created a 25 gig virtual hard drive. Is that what I want to, you know, where I want to install React OS? Of course. Do I want to do a FAT file system or a ButterFS file system? That's interesting that they offer ButterFS. I like that. But, of course, for Windows compatibility, we'll just do the FAT file system. Press Continue. 
It's asking, I guess, about the drive. We're going to call it React OS. And it is installing, and it's done. Boom. That's it. Now it's asking about the bootloader. Yeah, let's go ahead and install a bootloader. And the bootloader installed instantly. What we're waiting on now is actually the computer to count down for this uh, reboot. I actually need to kill the VM, though, before I reboot. I'm going to run a quick X kill here and kill that VM because I don't think it's going to detach the ISO by itself. So in the virtual machine settings, go to storage again and detach the ISO that we had attached before. This is the same as unplugging the USB stick out of the computer after an installation. And I have rebooted our freshly installed React OS. It looks like it installed just fine. And we're waiting. All right. So welcome to React OS, the setup wizard. I'm just going to very quickly just skim through this. It's asking about some licensing information. I'm not going to read the EULAs and all that that comes with some of the proprietary software that may be included. The operating system itself, of course, is free and open source software. But being a Windows clone, I'm sure there's going to be some license agreements for other stuff like the Microsoft fonts, if they're included, things like that. Very similar to what you have to agree to on some Windows or some Linux systems. I'm going to create an administrator password, a strong and complicated password, of course. Uh, asking about my time zone, I'll set it to the central time zone, which is where I'm at. Now, this is cool here. We can go ahead and set a theme. You can set that classic Windows 98, Windows 2000 kind of look. But they do have some better looking themes here out of the box. And I really like this last one, Maizu. I'm assuming is how it's pronounced. I'm not sure. Then I'm going to go with typical settings instead of trying to do custom settings. All right. And then finish. It says React OS is shutting down. It's going to reboot one more time. All right. That reboot was very fast. <laughs> One of the things about being basically a clone of a very, very old operating system, everything is fast, everything is light. It's asking about installing some drivers. Uh, I guess it couldn't find the driver it was looking for. I don't really need any you know, audio drivers or video drivers, whatever it was looking for. We're just trying some stuff out in the VM today. The first thing I want to do, though, I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to open up the control panel. And if, is there a display? Yeah, the display settings here. The first thing I want to do is get a better screen resolution. Now, 1600 by 1200 is the max, but my monitor is 1920 by 1080. So that's a little too tall. So I'm going to have to back it up to 1280, 1024. Yeah, that'll work. And we will say yes to keep those settings and hit OK. Let me resize this VM here so my head is out of the way. Now, the first thing you probably want to do is install some software, right? You, you Typically, that's when you first install the operating system. You know, where are the repositories? Where's all the apps and things like that? Well, let's see what we can find. Now, there is a help and support uh, tab here and help and support takes you to the React OS website, so that's really cool. It opens Wine Internet Explorer. That is interesting. So obviously, they can't ship with Internet Explorer, the proper <laughs> Internet Explorer, because it's not free and open source software. But they're free to ship Wine's version of Internet Explorer. I'm going to close that. So let's see if we have any better <laughs> browsers on the system. If I go to Programs, we have Accessories, Communications. Uh, no, I don't see... There's not much installed by default, and there's no browser in the menu system. So let's go to Run and Browse. And if I go to Local Disk C, Program Files. Okay, Internet Explorer is here. I don't really want Internet Explorer, but there's the Internet Explorer executable. I could open that, but I don't really want to. What I could do, though, copy and then paste that on the desktop because... Internet Explorer, for some reason, is not in this menu system. And you may want a browser, so you might want to paste it on the desktop. But really, I want a better browser. So if I go to Settings and the Control Panel again, let's open the Control Panel. And what I want to do is add Remove Programs. So this is very cool. So you have your, uh, basically, your, like your software center. 
<laughs> you know, those I guess would be similar to like your GNOME software center on a Linux installation, or maybe like the Windows Store <laughs> on the, the newer versions of Windows. But anyway, you have this where you can refresh, I guess, the repositories, you can update the database. I actually was not expecting this here in React OS, this very nice software center. If I go to Internet and Network, let's see if I can get another browser. Uh, Firefox, of course, being free and open source, <laughs> Firefox has to be here. But Firefox is on version like 70 something, but they only offer Firefox 48. Probably because anything past that simply won't run on this, again, clone of Windows 2000. So we're stuck with Firefox 48, but that's fine. I'll, I'll go ahead and install that because because that Wine Internet Explorer is a t is a horrible browser, right? It's so basically a cheap imitation of what was a bad browser anyway. All right, click next, standard. Yeah, it's gonna set it as my default browser. Do we wanna launch Firefox now? Sure, why not? Let's see how long this takes to launch. It's gonna import all my Internet Explorer bookmarks. That's fine. Yeah. And it looks like it's, it's running reasonably fast. Considering this is a VM. Of course, those of you that are going to want to run this, you're, you guys are going to want to run some Windows software. So what kind of cool old school Windowsy kind of software could we try to download? You know what? I'm going to go to audio because one of the things I really loved 20, 25 years ago was Winamp. And it is actually here. That is great. I'm going to go ahead and click install. It's taking a minute to download. All right, installer language, English, and of course we got to agree to the license for Winamp. And what all do we want to install? I'm just going to accept all the defaults, click install, click finish, and it should launch Winamp. We're asking about a theme. I like the classic Winamp, the old school Winamp theme. That's the one I'm definitely going to go with. It's sending in user information. <laughs> you hate to see that, but hey, you know, it's proprietary software, right? All right, and that window closed, but Winamp never launched. Well, they finally launched. I was about to say, I waited about 30 seconds. <laughs> Winamp took forever to launch there. I don't know if that was just a one-time deal or if it's going to be that slow every time. Let me see if I can. Uh, it says device not found uh, because it's searching for a media library. I didn't give it one. It's probably searching for some audio drivers too. Remember, I didn't I didn't set up an audio driver in this VM because I wasn't gonna be playing any audio. Some other stuff available in the software center here under the audio category. Audacity is here. Great free and open source audio editor. I love Audacity. Spotify is also in here. Just quickly looking through some stuff under video. Of course, you have VLC. Uh, SM Player is also here under graphics. You would expect free and open source software to be here. So GIMP and Inkscape, of course, will be here. Tux Paint is also here. You have some games you could install. Under Internet, you had Mozilla Firefox and Mozilla Thunderbird. The version of Thunderbird is 45. Opera is also in here. You have an Office category where you could install Abbey Word, Adobe Flash Player, LibreOffice, of course. Notepad++ is also in here. I know a lot of you guys love Notepad++, so... Let's see what else. We have GNU Cache under Finance. Under Tools, we have, of course, 7-Zip, which is another fantastic free and open source program. Midnight Commander, everybody's favorite file manager. We have a Drivers category and Libraries, some Java stuff. And then another category where you could install things like DOSBox and QEMU. I'm going to close the Software Center. The only other thing I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to click on properties and I'm going to get back into the display settings because I want to go to backgrounds. I want to see what kind of wallpapers you guys know. <laughs> I'm a sucker for checking out wallpapers and they have some pretty cool stuff here. Ah, here's some uh, old school bliss wallpapers. You guys remember the default bliss wallpaper for Windows XP? That is a very nice kind of clone. <laughs> they have several Bliss inspired wallpapers. These are really cool. I mean, it does have that old school Windows XP look. I really like that. Let's see, they have some uh, more minimal kind of wallpapers. I actually don't mind that. It's just 
a plain color with the React OS logo. I would probably go with that. It, it's a it's a clean look. I mean, it's old school, right? It's 20 year old Windows, you know, theming. But I don't know. I don't mind it. I, I actually prefer this. <laughs> I prefer this setup, and this look to the modern Windows 10 experience, if I'm being honest. That was really all I wanted to check out in this very quick cursory look at React OS. The only other thing I have is Solitaire. <laughs> I had to make sure Solitaire was here. Yeah, and then, then the Windows experience is now complete. We have Solitaire, and I also saw the Minesweeper game was also installed. So just a very quick look at React OS version 0.4.13. Again, it's alpha quality software. One of the critiques I have about React OS and why I've never looked at it on the channel before, I've looked at React OS personally myself many times over the years because, again, the project's been around for almost two decades. But I have very serious problems with the fact that they're basically making a clone of Windows 2000 and it's 2020. And your project is still alpha. It's still in an alpha stage. By the time you reach 1.0 and call it stable, nobody will care. I know some of you are going to say, well, React OS, can it play my Windows games? Can I run some of my Windows only software, you know, Microsoft Office and things like that inside React OS? Maybe, maybe not. Personally, though, I've told you guys this before, if you have to run Windows only software, you probably just want to use Windows. That's going to be the best experience is just running Windows, just run Windows in a VM. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, LibreQuest, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of this episode. Without these guys, this review of React OS 0.4.13 wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all of these fine ladies and gentlemen. Each and every one of these names you're seeing on the screen, they are supporting my work over on Patreon because this show is sponsored by you guys, the community. You want to support the channel? Consider doing so. You'll find me over at Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.